Sadika. Okay, today um, she's off to work. She's got a, uh, I think she's going back to the temple. She's doing some hair cutting, uh, again, charity work for the temple. Um, and it's sort of Sunday afternoon and I'm looking for something to do. Spent way too much time on the computer all day. So I'm heading off to a little place just down on the west side of um, Sanam Taksin, uh, which is a, it's a BTS station there and there's a, like a flea market thing going on. Um, it sounded interesting and we were talking about it last night or the night before with Ethan and a few others. Um, it's another one of these cultural events so you know, might be interesting to go and check it out. Anyway, so if that's the sort of thing that you might want to have a look at, <laughs> don't forget to see the website, uh, come and join us. Bye for now. Crazy woman on a motorcycle <laughs> taking me down to the actual taxi rank. Oh my god. What you doing? Too much wind noise darling, can't do. It's okay. Okay, so I'm at uh, BTS uh, uh which is just before the river. And they said in the uh, website or the, the Facebook page that it was um, exit 3, there's a free shuttle bus. So now I'm going to make my way and see if I can find that now. Well there's the exit 3 sign, so just follow that I guess. Yeah, exit three, exit three, that's still down there. Oh, so, so this crazy tuk tuk driver said that uh, just jump in here. I think he's more crazy than me. Oh my god. I somehow don't think that this is a free shuttle bus, but we'll see how we go anyway. He's definitely a crazy driver. <laughs> oh my god. Where's the seatbelts on these damn things? Well, I, I sort of made it here in one piece. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm sure you have to take your life into your own hands with those crazy tuk-tuk drivers. They are mental half the time, and the other half of the time they're just crazy. Anyway, supposedly there's a hundred baht uh, entrance fee down here. Um, it's down towards the river, so I guess this is the entrance and this is where we pay our fee. So, let's see how we go. Anyway, now we get to see what the actual flea market fair is all about. Um, uh, the information is a bit sketchy, uh, handcrafts and all that sort of stuff. It's not the sort of stuff that I'm really into, but uh, as I said, it's a Sunday afternoon. Shonya's uh, away doing work, which is something she's been doing pretty much all this year now. Um, she's very, very committed on the whole idea of getting her salon up and running. Uh, and that's a three-stage process. She's got to get a little bit more confidence in her ability to um, cut hair, especially men's hair. Then she's going to sort of do, you know, six months probably uh, with uh, Chai and Nan at, at uh, their little kiosk up at uh, Omnoy. Um, and then maybe she'll feel more confident from that to uh, start out on her own stuff. But anyway, just let's have a look around and see what we've got here. It's obviously just another market from my perspective, but um, they say this is a cultural event. And this is something that uh, we really um, are getting back to on this whole channel. I don't know how our sound's going to be with all this background noise. So a bit of a combination of live music and canned music. I don't know how we're going to go with the music copyrights, but we'll see how at least live music doesn't usually strike. Um, but yeah, it's just a, it's a cultural event, uh, and again, you know, like you know, when you live in Thailand, what do you do? Uh, is it something that uh, you know you just sit around at home and watch TV, or do you get out and see what the rest of the world's doing? Well, here we are again, sort of on the river. Um, if you've been to Bangkok before, you'll know the Shangri-La Hotel. Uh, this is just the edging on to Chinatown, and that's another event that's actually on today as well. It starts at 4 p.m. There's a Chinatown affair as well. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll get to that as well, who knows. But uh, as I said, Shonya's working. I've got nothing better to do than to hang out in the city. I'm just thinking one of the advantages of not bringing Shonya along 
is the fact that uh, I get to look at all the boys' stuff without having to be dragged along to look at all the girls' stuff, which is usually the case at these markets. A lot of fun. Well, I must say there is some rather interesting old bric-a-brac here. Um, not the sort of stuff you see at most normal markets. And a very high percentage of uh, foreigners here as well. Uh, again, see most of the markets we go to are out west, you know, in the suburbs. And most of the foreigners don't actually get out that far. Yes, that's what we want. We want drinks. Is that the Pan-Galactic Gargle Blast, I wonder? There definitely is quite a mix of all sorts of stuff in here. I've already seen a few things that Shonda would probably like to get a hold of. I'm glad she's not here to spend my money today. I do know the advertisement there definitely uh, had a, a point of uh, the fact that there was a lot of vinyl records. Uh, this is now the second place that I've seen a whole bunch of vinyl records. I didn't even know that they were still a thing. Uh, shows you how much I know about the music industry. <laughs> Me, it's all MP3 these days. But there you go. So here we are. Here's a, here's a, here's a young lad in a hair cutting salon right, in the markets. And he's from Melbourne of all places. No, no, no. Bloody cockroaches. Leave him alone. Oh my god. No, I'm from Sydney. Uh, okay. I've never been to Sydney before. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so it is a bit of an interesting experience. Like, uh, I think I don't really sort of, don't think we've actually been to many open air markets this close to the city. And the one thing I've already noticed here is the predominance of English speaking Thais. Uh, and uh, as I said before, you know, the amount of expats uh, you know, frequenting the market. This is the last day of the three day um, thing and uh, this is a number nine. I don't know whether number nine, but this is a number nine market or the ninth market or whatever. Um, but from what I can understand, this uh, legacy group, they, um, they do uh, these things all the time. You know, again, sort of legacy, you know, in Australia, that really sort of is uh, you know, a war uh, connotation, you know, with helping out the old diggers. Um, not quite sure if it means the same thing here, but uh, it's definitely sort of, you know, out of all the markets, there's some great little bits and pieces. But as you know, uh, from you know, what I've said in the past, you know, I left Australia and one of those ex one of those efforts for really living Australia was to reduce my life down to two suitcases. Okay, my life might be a bit more than two suitcases. It might have a motorcycle and a few other rods and ends like a computer. But you know like at a moment's notice I could probably put my life back into a back of a ute and piss off somewhere. Um, I really have enjoyed the fact that I've I've been able to remove all that baggage from my life over the last that I collected over 50 years, which is a refreshing thing. And again, that's uh, one of the things we do talk about when we talk about retirement. You know, what are you guys going to do? You know, are you going to bring your whole house with you? I know I've been you know, uh, conversing with Simon. Right? Uh, Simon Landis smiles, so look, there's a link up in the corner there. Uh, he's about to move, make his final move uh, to uh, west of Hoare Hill. Um, and uh, well, that area, I think more west of Char. And uh, what he's uh, been sort of saying is that he's got his life down to two hand, to, not the two handbag, uh, to two suitcases. <laughs> but <laughs> he's got a wife and he's going to bring half the house with him. Um, so he's having a few challenges. But this is one of the things that uh, if you are thinking about retirement here in Thailand, this is one of the things you are going to have to look at as a serious part of that decision. What do you bring with you? Um, you know, some of those things that you bring into the country, even though they're second hand, will attract a, an import duty. Um, and as I said, if you're thinking of bringing a car with you, well, that import duty in taxes could amount to 200% of the value of the car. I, I don't think it's the same for all goods and, uh, goods that you bring into the country. But it is one of those sort of things that really can be a, a fairly sort of serious consideration uh, in your ultimate move to Thailand.
There you go. So here I am with Robert and Meryl. Uh, Marilyn. Marilyn. Like Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn. Oh, Marilyn. Where's the skirt? Where's the ear? Oh my God. <laughs> so he's just telling me like last year this time he was in Sydney. Yes. We were in Sydney and then we were in New Zealand after that. Yeah. And we had an incredible time. Love the, love the Aussies. And now we're in Thailand. We're just on the last day of our trip. We fly back through Shanghai and back to Honolulu. With oh, okay. Live in Waikiki Beach. So you enjoying the stay here? Oh. This is incredible. What a wonderful event. Yeah, well, like, this is just one of the events that they have around the place. You know, like, I suppose people on hold, I never really get to appreciate exactly. all the things in Thailand. What's like, amazing about <laughs> this particular event is it's kind of like a lot of the booths, it's like you're in America at the flea market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, I don't know if you have a picture of the Airstream over in the corner. I haven't actually thought. I've been oh, over there. We had one just like it. All right. This is one of the things about like you know, my channel is really about time and Earl in Thailand. Right? So I'm actually retired, I'm here. Um, you know, I'm 56 like so you know, 57 on Thursday. But you're just a kid. 37 and a few months, okay? <laughs> but uh, um, you know, I've been here now 18 months. I just love the place. You know, so Where do you live in? Right in uh, Bangkok? No, I'm actually out uh, west of North uh -huh. uh, So there's really not very many foreigners out there. Uh, but it's a, it definitely is, a, you know, it's the, it's, the, it's the suburban lifestyle, which is what we're trying to train, you know? um, And, you know, like, really sort of focusing on, you know, what, what, you, what you would do here if you were considering this a very time and destination, especially if you're younger. You know, like, you're probably about 60. Yeah, I'll be 75. 75? Look at this guy, would you? What have you been eating? Seriously? Yeah, when you grow up in I'll the 60s. Yeah. We have two big birthdays coming up. Yeah. So you're going to Harley? No, no, no. Harley. No, we have a Mini. We have a Mini. Yeah. Convertible. That was, that was my first car. Yeah. Seriously. This is a 2005, the first convertible that came out. Oh, the new, the, the new Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a quite a Mini. Like yeah, yeah when we were in, when we first started the trip, we came back from Cambodia, we spent a night near Kosan Road, and we were walking back to Waverly we State. There was a mini gathering in almost all the provincial. And we all we we had lunch the and, and they loved you know, we just this was like mini mini party. Crazy stuff. We were, they had uh, these these events where they go up in the mountains and do all this stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We like mini people. I mean, we, That's cool. Anyway, bro. What a real pleasure. Now how did you happen to retire so young? Careful planning and, and, oh, that's and, really good. and you know the investments and you know all that stuff. And they're finally selling the house in the housing market like it's blue. Oh, we have friends who live in the uh, Killarney house. Killarney house? Oh, no, that place is Killarney. Oh, yes. And it's, the whole family lives like in different houses, but you know, they're all in the I was actually horse me on sideboard and push area. Okay. Uh, but uh, I bought for 240000 now, in uh, 1996, on my father, right, and so 20 years later, it was worth 900,000. Right, so, it wasn't a bad deal at the time. No, <laughs> absolutely not. We lived in a, uh, an old fire station built in 1896 in San Francisco, and we sold it for, for a lot more than we paid for it in 77. That didn't hurt our retirement. Well, oh, that sounds good. But we had a we had a business where we took people over to the Gate Bridge and a vintage fire, and that's what made us famous. And people all over Australia love what we did. Anyone so want to chat? Well, we have a YouTube channel. We have a couple of things on YouTube from our travels. Okay, well, I've given you my car, so just to plug in there. Yeah, just to say hello. It was a real pleasure. Retirement is good. Isn't it? Yeah, it's nothing really like it. It is. Okay, guys. See you in Waikiki. Waikiki. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. It's a little stall up in Son Long Song uh, in our local market that does these weird and wonderful light contraptions. And I tell you what, you know, building the right house, these things would look absolutely grand, and I can tell you. But that's just me, I guess. So what I've been sort of uh, alluding to is the fact that, you know, with Shania now working pretty much 
uh, 2 p.m. through to you know, 10 p.m. There's going to be less chance of us being able to get out together. Although she's um, has said that the fact that she can pretty much drop anything on the time to go and do something special, right? Just these casual market walk arounds are going to be few and far, far, far between. But aside from that, you know, like it's going to give me an opportunity to make out my own, make my own head roads uh, out into the social scenes of these markets and, and places of interest uh, over the next few months. I'm really looking forward to getting a hold of the, the motorcycle. Uh, that's uh, Let's, let's put it this way, it's probably less than a month away. Um, looking like the whole thing is going to be the fact that I'm going to have to purchase the thing outright. I have the money for it, it's not a big deal. Um, uh, as I said, tomorrow I'm actually starting the, uh, the, the paperwork process um, for the Yellow Book, uh, which will mean that I've got to register the vehicle in my name without having to go to the Immigration Department to get a letter of residency for everything you want to do which is a completely archaic system, but hey, look, that's what, that's what it's like here living in Thailand. You know, there's some bits and pieces you're going to have to get used to um, living out here, you know. Foreigners, like, you know, in, in the social ladder, as Mark would put it, in the social ladder, you know, we're just probably one or two rungs up above from the, the chicken and the dog in the social ladder. Um, so we don't really get many much respect in, in, in the general consensus of the way Thai systems work. Um, learning the Thai language is definitely sort of an advantage um, and, and that's something I'm making definite head raise for uh, this year uh, if I can get my act together. But um, aside from that, I'm here to have fun, you know, like I'm well, 56 going on 57. Life is about having fun guys. Um, yeah, last couple of videos you might have said Hey, where's he coming from? You know, like, seems a bit, you know, having a bit of a rant. Well, you know, like, what I'm trying to get at is the fact that uh, Thailand is a lot of fun, love it to bits. I don't know if you can hear me over this music. Actually, I might, I might just move over that way a bit. So I'm also trying to work out whether the music's getting louder as the night progresses. <coughs> but yeah. <coughs> Excuse me again. Uh, so really it's just coming down to this whole thing, you know, like, you know, the, where's the channel going? Well, you know, as I've sort of said, you know, recently, you know, it's not always a better rose. This, this is what you've got to get used to in the Thailand. Um, you know, most of the time I'm completely just, uh, don't give a damn about what's going on around me. Um, but yeah, you've got to sort of take a serious, serious consideration of that. Um, integrating into society is going to require you to learn the language um, and uh, getting getting through those difficult moments trying to sort of explain your point of view. Um, and even to this day, like although I haven't had any run-ins with the police or anything else like that, I'd be really challenged to try to explain you know, why I don't carry my passport in my bag. You know, I carry photocopies and how to explain to the police the fact that, well, the reason why I do that is the fact that there's a fairly high theft rate in Thailand. And for me to try to get a new passport and all that other sort of paraphernalia, well, that costs me time and money. Right? I'd rather lose a photocopy. Right? And if you want to, if you don't believe the photocopies are real, I'll turn up at the police station to show you the real stuff. Right? I believe from every bit of understanding I've got, this is perfectly acceptable. But unless, of course, you can actually sort of explain that in Thai, it makes it very difficult because there are laws. And these laws are very specific about living in Thailand. Uh, the most recent thing that's come up um, is this whole thing about um, checking in uh, to hotels and, and places of uh, you know residence um, when you're on your holidays. Okay, so if you're on a holiday stint coming out, most of it, it's really the responsibility for hotels and boarding houses and so on to take care of that aspect of your holiday, right? But if they don't do it, you can actually find yourself on the wrong side of the law and a 2,000 baht fine. Now, as for me, as I said, the, this yellow block, I still don't even know how that works. Okay, yellow block means the fact that I'm a resident of Thailand, which is what I'm trying to buy for here with the whole yellow book situation. Now, in that sort of case, and that sort of you know, thinking process, what we have is the fact that I'm saying I'm a resident, so if I want to go to Hoi Hien and check into a, an overnight 
um, B&B and they register my name down there, when I come back to my own residency here, which is my formal residency here as per the Yellow Book, I've actually got to do a trip into the Immigration Centre and tell them I'm back home because I'm the resident, you know, in my own house. I don't know who thought up these rules, but they are really, really archaic. Um, and there's something again, not having a wind, not having a complaint, but it's something I've got to really get out there. Like, if you're considering Thailand as a as a destinacy, a, a, a destin destination <laughs> uh, for retirement, you've got to think about all these little issues, right? Most of the times, we'll be just kind of too happy to, you know, look the other way and not have a problem with it. But as I said, there's been a recent, you know, spate of people coming afoul of this whole new uh, residency uh, point of view, uh, you know, checking in and everything else. And a few people have been hit with this 2,000 baht fine, right, just to get out of the country because, you know, the computer records say one thing and then, you know, you've said another thing and then they. It gets quite confusing. I'm here to help you out where I can, but you know, like I can't help you out getting out of trouble. There's a lot of stuff you're gonna have to learn. But anyway, look you know, again it's not around, it's just we're trying to get across this idea that you know, in Thailand there's a whole bunch of stuff we're gonna have to learn. But we were working on building on that with the forum for Thai Visa, uh, no not Thai Visa, uh, uh, the Thailand desk, but unfortunately due to circumstances they couldn't finance that operation. Um, yeah, we've got an, I've got another forum, if you want to join me on another forum we can discuss these things. Uh, it's called, um, what do you call it, uh, the Big Mango. Right, it's one of the old, more older style uh, bullet boards. There's a link downstairs in the, down at the bottom in the description box there. Um, I'm a regular patron there and uh, you know this is a great place to ask questions if you don't like Facebook. And it looks like I found the food place so I'm getting a bit peckish to see if we can find a eat. Well, there definitely is a lot of stuff around here that'd be great for the young homemaker. Um, but again I suppose, suppose I need a home first don't I? No use collecting all this stuff here to make a home put in a rented house and up and move it somewhere, isn't it? Well, there we have it. An uh, afternoon out, just checking out a, uh, a flea market uh, on the banks of the Char... The, what's the name of the river here? Check the I'll write it down there at the bottom of the subtitle. Uh, yeah, the main river through Bangkok. Um, yeah, again, it's a different experience. Uh, again, I do all these market stuff that I go to with Shania, but... Um, we tend to be about near our own place uh, doing these runarounds. You know, there's so many markets out there. Uh, again, this one here is just a different sort of vibe, a different sort of uh, eclectic nature. Um, yeah, again, it's all the not to do with what you what you what you what do you really treasure in life? Me, I treasure the freedom. Of, you know, okay, I might not have a Ute to shovel my stuff in a, a Ute and get out of here, um, but. Uh, the idea, the fact that I could fit my life into the two suitcases plus a computer and and maybe a motorcycle, well, I can deal with that. Um, you know, at the worst case, you know what they call a grab bag and out of you. Not that it really ever crosses my mind, but again, if you're not covering all the bases when you make those decisions to move to Thailand, right, then you're obviously going to have yourself in a bit of serious trouble. Um, now, here's a bit of a shout out to uh, another fellow vlogger up in uh, Chiang Rai. Um, wanted to just uh, uh, send out a heartfelt, uh, heartfelt uh, condolences uh, to Graham. Uh, he's recently found himself in hospital um, uh, with a, a mild heart attack. And he's one of these people that really hasn't prepared uh, for that final move into Thailand uh, and he hasn't covered himself for health insurance and you know either have health insurance or money stuffed, stuffed away in a secret account to cover those you know, ultimately the, the worst things that can happen in your life. 
Um, sorry, Graham. That's that's one of those sort of things that does happen. You know, if you weren't prepared. I can understand. Look, most people can't be prepared, uh, especially when they're sort of getting out of the rat race uh, to cover every every aspect. Anyway, I can see the uh, free shuttle buses here, so maybe I can jump on this thing here to get back to the Krung Chung. Yeah, yeah. So here we are on a um, Song Tao, uh, going back to the, the station. Well, here we are on the back of the Song Tao to go back to the uh, BTS. We can get the train home. Sorry about the bouncing. But um, uh, we're really only, it was only 800 metres as the crow flies from the BTS to the location. But again, when you start to live in Thailand, Nobody walks 800 metres. Motorcycle taxis, song cars, um, you know, taxis. It's all fair game. And it's not expensive. One of the things you'll get used to in Thailand, anything that's labour intensive in Thailand tends to be fairly inexpensive from a brain point of view. Um, so, you know, in conclusion from the last video, um, you know, about, you know, design of jeans and things like that, yeah, you're going to pay for the nose for that sort of stuff. But as I said, you know, when it comes to simple things uh, that are labour intensive in Thailand, you usually find a pretty good bargain. So there we have it guys and girls, another day, another vlog. One of these days I'm going to get a really clear day where I can give you sort of an idea of the landscape or the, the total vista that is Thailand or Bangkok itself. It is something that is just still blows my mind. You know, coming from a place like Sydney, you know, where you have this little pocket of you know, high-rise buildings in Sydney and then have a pocket of high-rise buildings uh, in North Sydney and a pocket of high-rise buildings in Chatswood, that's being on the North Shore. Right? Thailand is, or Bangkok is, as well as vistas of high-rise buildings as far as the eye can see when you get to the river. It is totally freaking bizarre. Anyway, uh, don't forget, uh, you know, like, I'm still looking for feedback, what you'd like to see in the channel, um, what sort of things you want me to sort of cover. Uh, it really is sort of, you know, it's your input that uh, drives, you know, the sort of things that I can throw in on a weekly basis. Uh, the more input you guys give, uh, the more feedback you get. Uh, <laughs> the noise of traffic. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, so it's really up to you guys. You know, like, uh, I'm just here living in Thailand. Uh, I try to sort of cover every aspect of, you know, that I get interaction with at some level, right? Uh, uh, either you know, referring you to a past video we've covered it, uh, or a future video that I might get to cover in you know, a week or a month. Who knows? But that's part of the way this thing works. Now, I'm just living here uh, every day, uh, mixing. Mixing my day up with, you know, social media, uh, online interaction, talking to my friends online, uh, getting out of the house, going and doing things, eating food, uh, playing computer games, watching TV, well, watching downloaded TV, that is, I don't actually watch Thai TV. Um, that's my life, you know, and I enjoy doing it. Uh, as I said, you know, in previous videos, uh, I'm thinking of taking up the guitar. Uh, I'm also trying to sort of work out how I can sort of fit in some, at least an hour's lessons a Thai a day. Um, it's something like, you know, it takes 21 days to make a habit. Well, I'm going to get to day one here, you know, like I, <laughs> I opened up my, my, my language course again today, spent five minutes there and go, oh, I've got to be somewhere else, you know. <laughs> There's always a shinier object out there on the landscape. <laughs> That's what it is to be ADHD, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway. Love you guys. Catch you later. <laughs> see, see you in the next video. Don't forget the, so the next one will be, well, it'll either be sort of, you know, the whole uh, getting the, the yellow book thing, you know, that's the first steps. But I might actually splice that into one complete series right, and keep that video for, you know, making one series. But the, definitely the next one we'll be doing is the bike show in the Central World on Wednesday. Anyway, so keep tuned in for that one. Bye for now.